Yesterday I did all the stitching. Now I have left the kayak overnight and now the skin is very, very tight and it's ready to do the next thing which will be coloring. By the way, I removed all the staples and now it should be completely dried out and ready to go. If you have bought my kit, you'll have some of this color pigment powder in it. And uh, this one, number 55, brown ochre. It's supposed to be only a quarter of a liter of uh, stain, but uh, I've mixed it to half a liter. And the thing you do is you open this envelope and you just put all the powder in the bottom of the bottle and you add a little water and that way you can put on the, the cork and you can shake it really well so that it gets salt. You can use hot water, that's even better. And after that you can add more water. For a medium sized kayak you will need about half a liter of stain, which is what I have here, but I doubt that we're going to use all of it. This is actually, I would call it small medium. So I just pour up a little bit of this. Remember to put on the cork in case you drop it. The color is really strong and I didn't put on my best cloth here. And I have this brush which is wide and easy to work with. The, the thing is we need to work fast to get a nice and even result. I'm gonna apply the, the stain almost to the edge here. If I go too far, we'll just run off and start dripping. So I go almost to the edge of the gunnel and it will, it will uh, be sucked into the, the lower fabric here. So here we go. Oops, uh, already started dripping. Takes a few tries to get the, the brush saturated too. So we start to come on a little messy here. And it's important to start at one end and just go to the other end. Both sides, of course, as the brush gets saturated, it gets easier. Just swap sides. And if it starts running, I immediately go over the places where the fish has ran and if, if it gets very uneven you can also go over it with some water later to just even it out Was it. Now I have these two straps handy and uh, I'm going to turn the cat around and I'm going to hang it 
from the deck ropes so that I will avoid contact with the with the skin so that it can cure without any spots or Good. Now it hangs there. And I'm going to do the same in the other end. And now remember to add a little extra on the seam. You have three layers of fabric here. And uh, if you don't add a little extra here, it will be lighter colored than the rests, and that doesn't really matter. But if you want it to look even, you can just pay attention. You just start staining the edge, no, the sorry, the, the seam, and then you go take it from there. You try to make it blend nicely with the first layer you apply. Just be careful with the little places where the the stretching uh, string goes. There are openings and holes. And if you put too much stain in a spot like that, it may want to drip down and make a little spot on the bottom. Won't be a big problem, it will just look a little uneven. And now, as you go, you will notice that when it dries out, when you apply it, it's dark. And when it dries out, it looks lighter. And uh, you may think it doesn't look so good. But uh, the next step is uh, varnishing. And when we varnish the fabric, the stained fabric, the color comes back. So it gets to look just as dark and nice as when you apply it and the stain is wet. half a liter yet and I won't. If you see there are some drips and runners you can go over them but After the stain is completely dried out, we are ready to varnish the kayak. We're going to varnish it several times, but the first coat is important. The idea is we want to saturate the fabric completely with varnish. If your varnish is uh, thick, you need to thin it a little so that it will saturate the fabric. You can take a little piece of fabric the leftovers from your sewing 
and varnish it and see if it gets wet with varnish on the inside. If it doesn't, you need to add a little thinner and um, you can use a lot of different varnish for this. In this video we are going to use a one part urethane varnish. It's cheap and it's suitable for floors. You can use other types as well like boat varnish or floor varnish. Um, it, the main thing is it needs to be um, made out of uh, an oil product. It shouldn't be water-based. I asked Audun to help me with this job because we wanted it done fast. We took the kayak outside. We want to work fast and don't care about spilling varnish. As you can see in this video, as we went, it started to rain. So the whole kayak became spotted. Make sure that uh, if you don't want spots on your kayak, don't take it out in the rain. As you can see here, we are working pretty fast. We just go fast over it and uh, look back once in a while to check that no spots are missing. Um, it, the varnish may drip a little bit, so we often go over it again. And after we have completed it, I will be around the kayak for some hours and uh, go over it with a brush just to make sure that it doesn't run or drip. The procedure is the exactly the same as we used earlier when we stained the fabric. We're going to start with the bottom and once the bottom is done we're going to turn it around, hang it from the ropes and do the deck. We need to be extra careful with the seams, make sure they have plenty of varnish on them. So we usually start varnishing on the deck seam and then spread out the varnish from there. According to the weather forecast, it shouldn't rain. But that wasn't true. It started raining as we varnished the kayak. The raindrops made little spots on the stain and uh, gave it a really cool spotty appearance. Now the first coat of varnish is completely cured and it looks pretty good. I have noticed a few drips but it's not a big deal. If you make large drips you can sand it down before you give them additional uh, varnish layers. And what happens now is <coughs> I'm going to finish what I started, giving it at least two extra coats of varnish all over. But before I start that, I need to do something about the seams. Because when we did the stretching and when we did the stitching, there are pretty big openings where the uh, fa fabric is uh, pulled by the thread and I need to to use this glue it's uh, transparent and you can varnish over it 
um, to just make sure the seams are 100% waterproof. And I need to do that before I start varnishing because I want a nice and even finish on my varnishing. And then I need to do this first. Once this is completely cured, which, which will take 24 hours, then I can go over it and varnish it again. I'm gonna show you a few tips and tricks here. I used this varnish on the first coat and I'm gonna keep working with this type of varnish. On the first coat I used a brush just to make it go fast and apply lots of lots of varnish. But now the whole fabric is saturated and I don't need the thick layers. I just need a couple of thin and even layers because I want it to look nice. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch to this. So I have this as a four inch roll, 10 centimeters, and I have put a foam roll on it. You can also use these short hair um, for a varnish. And um, so I'm gonna go over it a few times after I have uh, made the seams uh, waterproof. And uh, if there's a lot of rubbish, like little um, uh, dust in the, in the surface, you can sand it out lightly first before you start varnishing. And I will recommend two layers of varnish. Ex apart from the, the first one. But first we're gonna start using this stuff. It's uh, called TransClear. It's um, a sort of glue made for uh, all kind of uh, building projects. And they come in these handy little tubes. And I've included one in the kit. I'm wearing gloves because I need to use my fingers to get this smeared out. And I try to avoid using too much. Um, so I'm just making a very light, thin line of glue along the seam. And then I'm also putting a little dot of this glue exactly where the first stitching went, the zigzag stitching, remember that? That's where the biggest gaps in the fabric are. So I'm going to put a little dash of glue on every one of them. Like this. It's pretty thick. Of course, you can adjust the size of the opening on this tube. I prefer a small one. And of course, that takes a little time to get it out but then again I don't want to have too much of this stuff on the cat now here comes the little zigzag stitches I'm gonna put, put a good drop on every one of them and why I don't want to apply too too much of this is first I only got one tube for one project. It's quite expensive too. If you apply too much, it's, um, it's it will take longer to cure. And it will be hard to get like a nice and even looking surface. So now I've done a good part here. I'm going to show you what I do next. So I have been wearing my gloves all the time. So I try to do like on the, the first fold here, I'm going to make just like one long smooth movement. I try to just even out the glue without leaving any edges or just make sure that everything is nice and after finishing the varnishing still there may still be little holes left and uh, the 
to discover that when you have water in your kayak. But then I suggest you just go over it here and there where you see that there's water dripping through the seam. It's really easy to detect. So I'm a little dirty. You may pull off a little of the stuff also. It will stick to your finger and you can take it with you to the next spot. So the last spots where you haven't put anything yet will get what, I, what you have left on your finger. Now for the first little stitches here. I'm just pulling that out. The idea is to just make it nice and flat. Even looking, there may be little tra traces of your fingers left here, but with a few coats of varnish on top of this, it will all look nice and even. So, we're getting really close to finish now. I think I will not do more filming of the final varnishing because it's all explained in the first chapter where I earlier in this movie where I did the first layer basically it just, it's just repeating that process and you don't need me to talk about that again so, so I will just say good luck with your project I'm gonna make one more video at least about how to do the final little steps like rigging with the Deck ropes, you can put some wear strips underneath the bottom of the kayak, and I will make a video about how to make a sea sock in case you wonder how that's done. And, but for now, the project is uh, finished, and uh, thanks for your patience. Have fun and um, keep up the good work. See you.